sometimes you launch a brand and then you forget to keep looking at it. When you go through a rebrand process and you create all your wonderful set of values and your brand logo, everyone gets excited, and then you go back to your day job, sometimes you forget to actually integrate it into your everyday life. Uh, I've been more years than I can remember working in the business of sport. Um, I've been at Ascot for six years. I've worked on some exciting things like the Olympics, and um, but my start of my career at Adidas. So yeah, I've been in the business side of sport um, ever since I left university. It's really hard um, as an organisation to translate brand purpose into people's jobs every day. Because a brand promise is that it is a brand promise and you have to continually ask yourselves, are you delivering that? And I suspect that some brands might stop doing that. You need someone who's thinking about that every day because we do have our day-to-day -day jobs and you can not put that at the centre of your thinking unless somebody's reminding you to do that on a constant basis. So for example, how do you trans translate you know, raise the standard to a man who's running your car park. And we've tried to translate that as real live examples. So for example, when somebody asks for directions uh, on where to go, in the past you might have pointed, but we believe that it's more elegant to use your hands in such a way. And by giving very simple examples like that to members of staff, we help them translate the words into actions. Passionate employees translates to de delivering the brand. I think if you're happy but not actually delivering, then you are, you are, you're being a happy fool. It's a nice thing to meet somebody who's happy but who gives you absolutely terrible advice on what to do in your experience. Then you're still going to remember that person as being a bit stupid. I, I look for passion in my team around delivering the brand and commitment. They don't have to be happy every day to do that, but they certainly have to be uh, enjoying what they're doing. It's quite easy to kid yourself what your customers think of you because also you can ask your questions in a certain way to get the answers you want. I think if you've got very strong views internally about what your brand is, you can listen to the answers that you want to hear. So last year we launched a concept called The Deck at Royal Ascot and we thought our customers were saying that they, they wanted an upgrade experience but we didn't really go into much enough depth as to what that meant. It was simple things like everyone wanted a seat per person and they wanted to have much better toilets. This year we've completely changed the whole concept. We talk a lot at Ascot about the fact that we are mere stewards of a 307 year old brand and that is quite compelling to a member of staff to say the brand is really important because it is going to be here a lot longer than you are. One, one action that actually impacts on the brand one could have quite serious ramifications because we are in the public eye. It's extremely easy to unravel and undo all the good work. If you come to Ascot, you have an expectation. One of the core pieces of consumer feedback was that they expect a special occasion and we have to deliver that across every, every, every enclosure in every way.